Welcome to Perio Magazine, where I chat with individuals who have a desire to create. Today, I'm joined by a movie producer and one of the lead actresses in the new thriller, Sissy. Welcome to Perio Magazine, Emily De Margariti. Hello. <laughs> uh, so we're here today to chat about your journey with the new film, Sissy. Before we do mm -hmm. so, are you able to give our audience a brief introduction into who Emily is off the movie set? Sure. Um, well, when I'm off the movie set, I, I'm always trying to get back onto the movie set. So I'm either training in LA um, or I'm making plays, putting them on um, at the Sherry Theatre in LA, or I'm making short films or working towards my next like female driven feature. Okay. Nice and busy all the time then. Yeah, I like to be busy. <laughs> um in terms of Sissy, when did you first hear about the film? I think it was like early 2020 when I first um, was emailed the script. Um, yeah, I got it sent by Kane and Hannah, the writers, who were also the directors of the film. Um, yeah, I just took a good liking to it, I suppose, during the pandemic. <laughs> was there anything in particular about the script that made you sort of go, yes, I need to be involved in this movie? I just think the whole, like, concept of, like, social media and, I don't know, specifically Instagram, I feel like that one explored more fully. But um, I just find it so interesting, social media and, and, like, and the negative aspect of it. So I think, and the world that was created as well. I mean, I can't give spoilers, so it's really difficult um, to explain what I liked about it. but. If you watch it at the Sydney Film Festival, you will understand why. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been lucky enough to see it. So it's a very, oh, very interesting movie. Um, it <laughs> dives into those concepts of social media addiction, mental health, um, whole influencer phenomenon. Um, mm -hmm. Have you had to deal with any of those sort of things personally? Um, I think that, I mean, I think that we all kind of with social media we always like represent like we we show a perspective like right now you're seeing like a perspective of my little box here and you don't know what's here or there or and i just think with social media i mean gosh what were the ones it was myspace back in the day i never got into myspace it was bebo i was into bebo and then what else the facebook but now everyone has facebook but Instagram became the next thing and then it was TikTok and Snapchat and, and all of that. Um, I think specifically with Instagram, I find it really fascinating because you're always putting out like your best version of yourself all the time. And um, I just think it's very difficult, especially as a young woman, I think seeing, you know, Photoshop pictures of people all the time and you, and you see that and you think that that's how everything's always meant to be and you see people posting things of, you know, them on holidays or doing all the fun things, right? We're never going to post a picture of us, you know, a negative or a, a picture where we don't look good on social media most of the time. So I think just having and seeing that it can create like body dysmorphia in a way for young women. And I think that it is a little bit unhealthy. And I think now there's a conversation more about it, which is great. But it, I think it is very difficult for young girls. Yeah, I think during this whole pandemic, I think the, the nice thing to see is when people are sick, they are posting like, yes, I was sick rather than just mm -hmm. pretending that they were healthy the mm -hmm. entire time. Exactly. And not only that as well, right? Because you, you've got, um, like news reporters in their room all of a sudden, and you've got like, you know, their bookcase and whatever, and the cat going past and you're like, oh, so people are living their lives like normal humans and it's okay. So I think partly as well, COVID and, and seeing that as well kind of makes us relax a little bit but um definitely i think instagram is uh, a platform where people will post pictures with lots of filters on your face and um and that's difficult for young girls again because they see that and then they want to get work done to their face or um they see people being really body confident all the time but just because you're body confident in that little slice of life doesn't mean you're always feeling that way yeah i think that's important to remember definitely and then obviously with Sissy, rather than allowing it to get dark and depressing by touching on all of these themes, 
it um introduces a lot of comedy woven throughout the movie how important do you think that was to prevent it getting too dark um it's interesting because i don't watch horror films <laughs> um i like dark comedies it's like my favorite genre um i just think with comedy as well like it releases tension as well and i think delving into that negative aspect of social media and how far it can go i think you need that comedic relief you need it to be a little bit satirical um and they were influenced by quentin tarantino as well um with with i can't really tell you i can't do spoilers i don't want to do spoilers <laughs> um you will see you will see if you watch it <laughs> given that you aren't a horror fan yourself how was it in being involved in this movie and so did you have to watch some horror movies to get a bit of influence? Yes, I had to watch a bunch of horror movies. Um, <laughs> I feel like acting in them is a lot of fun. Um, I find watching them is terrifying. Um, my imagination runs wild. But I think when I'm filming them, I know exactly what's going on. And there were even moments um, filming where um, I had some interesting experiences, but I can't say because of spoilers again. Um, where I came to terms with a lot of things because it was very dark and depressing, some of the situations. Um, but it's nice that we can find like a comedy from that. Um, In terms of sort of the movies that you watched for inspiration, what were some of those movies? What were some of the movies that I watched for inspiration? Um, uh, well, specifically with my char character, Alex, I looked at um, Rachel McAdams in, as Regina George. Um, and I looked at Helen from Bridesmaids <laughs> with Rose Byrne. And what else did I, who else did I look at? I looked at Donna Versace as well. Um, and that's because of her style. Alex is very like over the top OTT. Um, so that's what I watch more so. So I wouldn't say there were horrors. So... I got away with a lot, um, but I was forced to watch a list that the directors gave me, but um, it was difficult. It was painful. To, it was painful to watch them. <laughs> yeah, for someone that doesn't like horror, I can't imagine that was all that fun. <laughs> yeah, I can watch Kill Bill, though. Like, I can watch films like that. I'm obsessed. Mm. Did you have to look at any sort of social media influences as well for inspiration? I didn't necessarily have to for my character, um, but in the creative process, we, um, I remember Hannah and Kane, they were talking about uh, an influencer. She's a criminal, she's a, what is she, a criminal wellness influencer, and her name was Belle Gibson. She actually faked having cancer, and she used to do sell, like, remedies and stuff for it, and it, it was a whole thing, but um, I think they were influenced by this influencer particularly because she was someone who really did use it for you know not for good causes um and she was, you know praying on the week i suppose in a way so um yeah she was a massive influence for them um and sort of without giving away spoilers this film follows a new uh trend that i've noticed in horror where the the final girl is also the killer why do you think mm -hmm. this has become such a a more popular storytelling technique i don't know why it is a popular i don't understand why that is it is the way that it is <laughs> um i think that it's interesting though because um when you watch this film you are not sure necessarily who the antagonist is and who the protagonist is i would like to say it's up open for interpretation as well with this who is like whose side are you on because i think a lot in life as well it's not just black and white um uh, you know, I mean, I mean, as Alex, I feel like I'm in, in the right. <laughs> um, so it just, yeah, it's open for interpretation, I suppose. But, like there were sort of three strong-willed women in this movie. Right. I, I, I enjoyed that as well. I think it's more realistic as well because, yeah, we do have different interpretations of things and especially because it's about a group of women and a female friendships and, and things are confusing like that. It, yeah, they never, you know, everybody has their own opinion about things. So it's not necessarily, yeah, it's not black and white. Hmm. And then the film has some gruesome and graphic death scenes. What was it like being involved or witnessing those being filmed? Um, God. I mean, look, the prosthetics team did an incredible job, I have to say. 
scared the crap out of me half the time. Um, yeah, look, some some of those scenes and some of those prosthetics are terrifying. Um, I'm just happy that I could see it in the flesh, so I knew that it wasn't real, so it wasn't as scary for me. So when I watch it, I'm, I know what I'm watching, so it's okay. There's going to be no jump scares for me because I'm watch I've already seen everything. I've acted in it, so it's all right. Um, it was challenging, um, very challenging, I think, seeing, yeah, people decapitated and, um, yeah, it's not, I mean, you don't really want to see your friends like that, do you? Mm -hmm. It's terrible, it's terrifying, <laughs> it's kind of terrifying is the best way to put it. Did you have a particular favourite scene that you were involved in? My favourite scene? My favorite scene I was involved in. Um, I liked uh, is a dream sequence, and I really liked that scene. Um, uh, and then there's another scene that I'm not involved in that I'm obsessed with. Um, his name is Sean Martindale, and he's like the cop, and he is the funniest person. He's funniest human. Like <laughs> you'll know what I mean when you watch the scene. It's towards the end, but he's hilarious. Yep. Uh, and then the film has just debuted at South by Southwest. How was that experience? It was exciting. Uh, it was awesome to have our world premiere in Austin. I've never been to Austin. Um, and uh, yeah, it was incredible. It was nice seeing all our hard work just on the screen and people enjoying it and cheering people on and laughing and crying. So it was an incredible experience. Awesome. And you just met, you mentioned at the start that the film is coming to the, the Sydney Film Festival this mm -hmm. year. How exciting is that for you? So exciting. I can't wait. Now everybody in Australia can see it. Are you going to be able to come home to be part of the festival? That's the plan. That is the plan. I believe the festival is on the 8th to the 19th of June, but my birthday is on the 9th. So I'll be back. I'll be back and I will watch it and enjoy it with all my friends. Perfect, perfect birthday present. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and then where is the best place for people to support the film? Um, you can support the film um, by, you, you can follow, you can follow Dems Entertainment on Instagram, or you could follow This Is Acadia on Instagram, um, as well as if you follow the actors, you'll be able to see all updates about Sissy. Um, and then everybody's been using the hashtag triggered. So if you type that in on Instagram, you'll see, um, all the posts about it. Okay, perfect. And then finally, where's the best place for people to support you personally and track your creative journey moving forward? Well, you could follow me on social media if you dare, but I feel like it's Emily Jane B E. Um, that's my Instagram. So you're welcome to follow me there. All right. Perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time and good luck with the, the release and the, the film and see you at the film festival in June. Sounds wonderful, Jamie. Thank you very much for having me.